Man, Jesus is so good. He is so good. And just another thing to share about testimonies. We, they're not just stories that we're telling where we're like, hey, this happened, like, cool, that's amazing. But testimonies actually mean do it again. Like when you are hearing a testimony, there is power that's being released in it, and it means do it again. So every single thing that you heard, there's a grace that was released on that for your healing as well. That's why we share them. So that's a big part of it. I just wanted to share that little thing. But Jesus, we love you. We just welcome your presence here. You are so welcome, and you're so already here, Jesus. And we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, today is an amazing day. It's actually going to be the best day yet. I don't know if you guys know that. But I got word today that it's going to be the best day yet. It's going to be better than it's ever been before. That God's going to have surprises for you left and right. So just be ready. Be watching out. Because he likes to surprise us sometimes. But I just want to share a little bit of, just a little bit of my testimony. I've just been, in this past season, I have literally been overwhelmed by the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. And I just, a big part of why I want to share this is just to thank you guys, because you guys have been such a huge instrument for why that's taken place in my life. And I, since I was a little girl, grew up in the church, I've shared this lots, but pretty much like my cousins and all of us, we were pretty much born on the chairs. Like we were here all the time. And it was amazing. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Being a pastor's kid, pastor's granddaughter is the best thing ever because you get to be in the middle of everything, in the middle of all the amazing things God's doing. And, but because of that, I just, at a young age, just, I've always loved Jesus. I had experiences with Jesus. But there was, I'd say, I think it was my sophomore year, I got in this, um, this really bad accident. I broke my ribs, I collapsed and punctured my lung, I broke my shoulder blade. It was just a lot of stuff. And I was like a go, go, go kind of girl. Like, I played all the sports and everything. And then, all of a sudden, when your body's broken, you can't play sports. It's weird. So I was stuck in my recliner chair, just coughing up blood, and it was not fun. But in that time, I just started to experience the presence of Holy Spirit. I, it began to become real to me, like what all of them were saying. Where Holy Spirit wasn't just someone that we talk about or someone out there, but he became real to me. Like his presence was real. It wasn't just a goose bump that you get in worship, but he was a person. And he was real. And he loved me. And he loved to spend time with me. And I began to realize that. And I would sit there and I'd listen to these, um, this worship CD. It was just Psalms. Someone actually took Psalms like out of the Bible and just put music to it. And it's the best CD ever. I love it. But I would listen to that over and over again. And I was just being so ministered to. My body was actually being healed without me realizing it while I was just sitting there in the presence. And my body was healed very quickly as well. But it was at that time when God just started shifting things in my life. All of a sudden, I was certain that I was going to go and play college sports. Like I had talked to some of my high school coaches and everything. And they're like, yeah, you're, like, you're on the track for it. We'll do this. And so that was like my game plan. And then ministry was kind of like the back thing, too. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go play college sports and then uh, ministry possibly. And then it, the whole direction of my life shifted dramatically. And I was just like, I'm ready to go for Jesus. I am ready to do this. And I went to this conference at Bethel Church, the Encounter Conference. It was amazing. I got my face rocked off. Like, it was just the best thing ever. I was like, Jesus, wow, this is awesome. And at that time, I was like, okay, well, I really feel like I want to graduate early and I want to go to the school of ministry that they had there. And so I, I told my parents, I was like, this is what I want to do. And this was coming into my junior year. And they're like, okay, are you sure that's what you want to do? Like, are you sure you want to leave school, do online school instead, graduate early? I was like, yep, that's what I want to do. And so I did that. But in that process, it was really interesting. All of my friends all of a sudden didn't like me really weird. My best friends and everything all of a sudden were like, Meh. they just said the sweetest things about me. It was so kind. No, they did not at all. So all of a sudden, all my best friends were gone. I was like, who are my friends? What is going on? But I just kept going after Jesus. And I said yes. I remember just saying, there was one time I was out in the parking lot out here looking over the city. And he's like, do you want the keys to the city? 
I was like, yes, Jesus, I do. I really do. And every time I go to that spot, I just think of it because it's an amazing encounter with him. But he's like, okay. And so I, that, after that, yes, his faithfulness just started to flood me left and right. And obviously there are some hard things that come around when you say yes, but I just want to let you know that saying yes to Jesus is the best thing ever. When you give him your full yes and you're like, here, just take it all. I don't care. Take my friends. Take the world, but really give me Jesus. It's the best thing ever. It's amazing. After that, I was invited to go to South Africa, which was a dream I'd had since I was a little girl. I went there. I've prayed for people. I've been there twice now. I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears open, little kids who couldn't speak, beginning to speak for the first time. i just seen Jesus getting his full reward. And so when you say yes to Jesus, it's the best thing ever. I'm just telling you, just do it. And you guys are radical here. I know you all are. And you love Jesus with your whole heart. So I'm kind of preaching to the choir right now. But the yes to Jesus is the best. Saying no to the little things so that you can have a big yes for Jesus. So worth it. And he likes to make your dreams come true. I just want to share that with you. I remember one time I was at a conference again in Washington. I was worshiping and I was looking at Darlene Check down there. And I was like, Jesus, if I could do that the rest of my life, that'd be the best thing ever. And then, you know, years later, all of a sudden, I'm starting to lead worship. Like, what? Like, Jesus, he just makes your dreams come true. I just finished recording an album. Oh my gosh, what? That's unmerited goodness in Jesus there. But he will make your dreams come true. I'm just letting you know that. You say yes. You might not see it right off the bat, but give it a few years, and you'll be like, oh, that's what you were doing there, Jesus. Awesome. All right. Now to get to this word. Let's go to Romans 8. And just so you know, guys, I, my personality is like, woo! So that means that I like interaction. I really do. And one time I heard a a preacher say, um, yeah, so, you know, if you give me amens, the anointing will come. And if you keep them coming, I'm probably going to preach shorter. So either way, it's a win-win for you guys. So just keep the amens. (laughs) Keep it just coming. I will love that. I will greatly love you for that. All right, we're going to go to Romans 8.1. There are about two books in the Bible that I preach out of, and that's like Romans and Acts, oh, and 1 Corinthians. So, of course, we're preaching out of Romans today. It only makes sense. All right. You're there? I'm going to spit my gum out. You're welcome. So now. Thanks, Grandma. (laughs) So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you. From the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Though, come on, thank you. (coughs) Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit Think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. The Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ in them do not belong to Him at all. 
And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Here comes the kicker right here. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. (laughs) And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Hallelujah. That's it, guys. You can go. Be blessed. Be blessed. I have been fed. <laughs> but let's just hit on some of these verses because it's, it's nice to amen these. Obviously, there's a lot of things where you're like, yeah, amen. But let's dig into it. So verses 1 and 2. I mean, first of all, this is so just huge in our walk with Christ to know that there is now no condemnation. There's no condemnation. So guilt and shame, that's not from Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, he is not going to put shame on you. He walks in love. That is my Jesus. He convicts us of our righteousness. He lets me know how amazing I am. And he's like, baby girl, you're a little too amazing to do that. Like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, oh my goodness, you're right, Jesus. I am a new creation and I am righteous. So I shouldn't do that. So we are free from the power of sin. So sin doesn't actually have power over us anymore. Before, we were literally bound to sin. Like, we had no choice. We were stuck there. But now, he has freed us from that power of sin because Jesus came in a body just like ours. I think it's really easy for us to think of Jesus just because he's Jesus. You don't really think of him as a man who came in a body, you know? Like, Jesus came in a body just like us. He had the same limitations, everything like that. And because of that, he is proving a new way to live life. The more we learn about Jesus, the more we learn about the way we're supposed to live, truly, and what's available to us. Now, when you go to verse 9, we are now controlled by the Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes inside of us, that is what's controlling us now. It's not our sin nature now. But the Holy Spirit is truly controlling us now if we let the Holy Spirit. And verse 11, this is so huge, so huge. The Spirit of God lives in me. The Spirit of God. So we're talking Creator God, Spirit of God lives in us now. Oh my goodness. That's great news right there. That is great news. All right, now if we're going to jump down to verse 19. I'll read this to you right out of here because I like this verse a lot. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. That all creation is waiting for us. Come on. I think that another way we can say that is all creation is waiting for us to realize who we are. Because that's the biggest thing, because he knows who I am. Like God's up there continually telling me, baby girl, that you're amazing, and he's speaking life over me. And all of a sudden, I have to start to realize who I really am. Like all creation is sitting there. I've shared this before, but water itself, like Jesus, he walked on water, you know. Like the earth is crying out for those same miracles. Water wants to be walked on again. That's what it's talking about. Creation is groaning for us to realize who we are. It's like, hey, can you realize that you have the spirit of the living God in you? Like, come on. So just think about it that way that creation is actually waiting, us for, waiting for us to realize the spirit of God lives in me. Now I'm going to hit on this quite a bit. We're going to go to Colossians 1. 18 now. I'll give you a second. I'm really prepared. Oh, wait, no, it's actually up there. I don't even need to give you a second. So Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. That got me. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him 
God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you, who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now, he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. And as a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Man. Now, once again, I just want to just pull from some of these verses. What do they really mean? Because it's, it's easy for us to read these things and be like, man, that is great. Like, I am holy and blameless. Cool. Like, all these verses are amazing, but how are we going to apply this? Like, how are we going to take these truths and make them change our lives? Like, how are we going to walk out and see fruit from these verses? And so, verse 18, it's talking about, you know, Jesus is the head of the church. But it says, he is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. So he is first in everything. And also in scripture, it talks about, like, Jesus is, like, the first of the brethren. And so it's talking about, my dad shares this, about he's like our older brother. Like, we can kind of picture Jesus as our older brother. And so what, what I think about is I know that with my siblings and when I babysit my nieces and nephews, if they see their older sibling doing something, they're like, I can do that too. Oh, I can do that too. And so what if we start applying that with Jesus? We see everything that he did and we're like, oh, my older brother, my, my savior, he did that. Oh, I can do that too. Like that's what this is saying, that he is first in everything. So he's first. So that means there should be a second. That means there should be other people, us, who are doing the same things that Jesus is doing. Yeah. It's given us full permission. Now we look at scripture and we're like, oh my goodness, I can do that. It's not, oh man, that's amazing. But it's like, oh, that's an invitation. Oh, I get to do that. Oh, that's my inheritance. That's what Jesus did for me. He paved that way for me. So that's great news right there. Come on. Okay, verse 19. Like I said, this verse got me. God, in all of his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. And he was pleased to live in Christ. Oh, let me read it. Before I get to that, let me read you this verse that's just going to be a big kicker for you. Let's go down to 26 and 27. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past. But now it has been revealed to God's people. That caught my attention for sure. I'm like, a secret for generations and centuries? Really, now revealed to me? Tell me. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. That means us. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. <laughs> this gives you assurance of sharing his glory. The secret that was kept for generations and centuries. They didn't even know this. This was not a reality to them. But now it's been revealed to us that Christ lives in us. Christ lives in me. Oh, that's the most radical thing. It's scandalous. It's crazy. But he lives in us. And now because of that, we get to share in his glory. So the second that you go back to God was pleased to live in Christ, now you take that. So God was pleased to live in Christ. Well, Christ lives in me. So that means that God is pleased to live in me. Right? Isn't that what that means? Oh, my goodness. That changes everything. And now I stand holy and blameless before him. We stand holy and blameless before Christ now, before God. Before we couldn't. Our sin was separating us from him. We were totally separated from him. But then all of a sudden, Jesus came in. He saves the day. He's like, I'm going to destroy the power of sin to where now actually sin has no power over you. And so he comes in. He fills us with his spirit. And now that means Christ is in me. That means God is pleased to live in me. So that means the spirit of God lives in me. And he likes to live in me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's wild. 
How crazy is that? I know that I never thought about that. I never thought about, you know, it's like, oh, Jesus lives in me. But really, like Christ lives in me and God was pleased to live in Christ. So God is pleased to live in me. Creator God is pleased to live in all of us. He is so pleased to be inside of us. So much so that he said, like he sent his son and we know that Jesus, he, he paved a way for us where he ruined the power of sin and now we, we're over here and we're righteous. Like that's great news as it is. That's amazing. But what is scandalous and crazy about this is that there is a God who is so in love with us that he says, I'm going to send my one and only son, my son. I'm going to send him. He's going to die for you. He's going to die humanity's death. He's going to take on sin just so that I can't only be with you in heaven. It's not so that we can just be with God in heaven, but he did that so that he could come and be with us now. God wants heaven to be inside of me right now. What? God wants heaven to be in us now. That's what the gospel is about. It's not so that we can, oh, Jesus, just take me, Jesus. Just take me, Jesus. No, we're ruining the work of the cross when we do that. It's ruining what the cross is really about. God sent his son so that Christ could live in me, so that heaven could be in me now, so that I can release heaven on earth now. I'm here to reconcile the world back to my daddy. There are a lot of people who don't know the love of Christ. But now Christ lives in me. Oh my goodness, I can actually reveal Christ to people. The gospel has to have skin on it. The gospel has to have skin on it. And now it becomes a realization. Oh my goodness, Christ is in me. I really am the gospel with skin on it. Yes. So our purpose is to reconcile the world back to Christ. And we have full access to that now. Christ is in us. He made the way. Heaven is inside of me. And so now, all of a sudden, when we see someone that has had a surgery, has terrible pain in their back, someone who was, had a full ride to play college sports, but then this injury got in the way and she couldn't play anymore, all of a sudden we're like, hey, I have a solution for that, actually. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. And he really likes to jump out on people. <laughs> he totally does. But that's our invitation right there. It's always an invitation now. I found myself, he gonna jump on you. He gonna jump. But I found myself where I just wanted to be more aware of his presence. Like I really did, and, and I do. And I, remember I was just sitting there in the grocery store, not the grocery store, we were sitting there in a restaurant, and all of a sudden I began to look around and I began to realize that it's not just a crowd of people walking around me, but these are people that are actually souls. And who doesn't know Jesus? Like who in this, I'm, I know there's probably a person in this crowd who doesn't know Jesus. And all of a sudden it, it began to change everything where I began to have such a purpose. Even if I wasn't doing anything special or anything, but I had a purpose to show people what love looks like instantly. I had a people to show them how Jesus feels, what he does how he interacts with people. And it changes, it changes everything. You can walk into any room and instantly you have an assignment. You have a purpose. That's to show people who Jesus looks like, what he looks like, to be his hands and feet truly, to put skin on the gospel. So let's, let's jump to Matthew 3.16 too. I just want to hit on this for a second. Um, so this is when the Holy Spirit... Send it on Jesus. I'll read it. Is it behind me? Perfect. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. 17. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. So this is an example as well. I'm, gonna, I'm just talking about how we have full permission to do what Jesus did. So Jesus, 
he didn't actually start seeing fruit in his ministry until this point in time. And this is when the Holy Spirit came, descended on him. He found out his identity from his father. God was saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. But the second that he realized that, actually prior to this, John the Baptist would preach, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near, right? That's what, that was John's job. Well, Jesus, after this, my dad and I were looking at this, we had a lot of fun. Jesus began to preach, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes. Hey! <laughs> yes! What does that mean? That means Jesus had that full realization. Holy Spirit came, gave him power. He had his identity from his father. And now he says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So everywhere that we go, it's not the kingdom of heaven's near, but it's actually, hey, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Oh, you need healing for your body. Amazing. Oh, you've never tasted Jesus' love. You don't know who Jesus is. Let me bring the kingdom to you right now. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so this happened with Jesus when Holy Spirit came. So in Acts, when Holy Spirit came, filled them, all of a sudden, Peter, you know, he began to preach with boldness that he never had before, right? He saw 3,000 saved. Peter was not like that before. I mean, he denied Jesus. He was not very bold. Like, he was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe Jesus is the Savior, the one I'd been with for all this time. I gave my life to him. I don't know. Holy Spirit comes on him. He's crazy bold now. He's like, let me preach the gospel of this good news because the kingdom of heaven is at hand to me now. Because God came down. His spirit lives in me now. Now heaven is inside of me. And I have the boldness to know that heaven has my back at all times. And the thing about this is, I, I know that it can be a little intimidating when you're going after healing for someone or you want to see souls saved because I was, I grew up in sports, so I was competitive naturally. You know, my dad taught me as a third grade basketball team, demoralizing defense. And we're these little third graders like, what does that even mean? He's like, to take away their hope. We're like, yeah. <laughs> But that's, that's what I grew up with, so I'm naturally competitive. <laughs> and we went undefeated, just so you know, our basketball team, we were undefeated. We took away their hope, that's for sure. <laughs> but, wrap my mind around this now, whoopsie daisies. Yes, it can be intimidating. But that's an I person. Like I said, I kind of, one of the things I struggled with the most was performance. Just because I was raised so competitive. Like, you have to win. You have to win. You want to see results. And, but in the kingdom, it's not like that. And my dad, trust me, they don't teach me that now. <laughs> it's just in sports. That's very kingdom. We believe in winning and victories. So that was very kingdom teaching. But I personally began to kind of find my identity and the fruit that I would see in healing and stuff like that. That was kind of where I would find my identity. I'm like, yeah, they were healed. Woohoo! Like, I would get, and I really was finding my identity in that more so. And, and not just being a daughter. And the second that we do, here's the thing about the kingdom, is that this is not about us. Healing is impossible for Christy. Like, without Jesus in me, healing is fully impossible. I can't do anything on my own. With Christ, we can do all things. Amen. We can absolutely do all things. And so what it is now is realizing this realization that God sent his son to die for me because he loved me so much that he wanted full access to me right here, right now. That he didn't want to wait but he wanted heaven to come inside of me. He wanted to dwell in me. He wanted to send the Holy Spirit to be in me, to live in me. And because of that, I have to be an encounter to the world. Like, I have to show them this hope that's inside of me. I have to show them the solution. I can't see people who are sick anymore. I'm working on being convicted. This is like a new thing I'm walking Like, just seeing someone who's sick, seeing someone with a cast, if anything's like that, it needs to be a red light to us because we have to realize that this is Jesus in us. 
Like heaven is in me. Jesus is in me. And I owe the world an encounter. I owe all those people who don't have any hope. Like I owe them this encounter. I have the answer in me. I have the way in me. Like I have the way. You don't have to be lost anymore. This is the way. This is Jesus. He's life. He's love. And he wants to be with you. It's just, that's what Jesus is all about. That's what the gospel is all about. That's what this message is all about, that it's not us, and it's never been about us, but it's about what he did so that he could have full access inside of us. And another thing, too, is we talk about open heavens, right? We sing about it in worship. We're like, open heaven. And, but what does that look like? What is that going to look like, really? And what if in open heaven is me being fully convinced of my access to him at all times? Because, like I said, it's truly not about me. It's not about my gifts. It's not about my talents. But his world crashing into our world, it hinges on one simple truth, which is the awareness of his presence right here, right now. And we've experienced his presence in such a beautiful way today. Such a beautiful way. But knowing that God is not just with me and he's not just near me, but he is actually in me. That God's not just near me or around me, like, where are you, God? But he really is in me. And the more we become aware of that reality, The more that in those times when you really are going through a struggle, you're going through a hard time, you don't have the answer, you're like, God, where are you in this situation? There's that realization of the Spirit of God now lives within me. So that means that I have full access to Him right now, even though my situation is making it seem like I don't have any access at all, the heaven is really far away. The truth is, the highest reality is that Christ is in me, The heaven is in me now, and I have full access to tap into that. So God is not just with me. He's not just near me. He is in me. I embody his presence. That we literally embody his presence in our lungs, in our body, in our soul. He is fully with us right here and right now. And because of that, we owe the world an encounter. That's like when we sing that song, it's your breath in my lungs, so I pour out my praise. I just, I instantly started crying because it was becoming real to me what I was singing. Like, Jesus, God, it is your breath in my lungs. You inhabit all of me now. And so I pour out my praise. I present myself as a living sacrifice to you, God. That we, like I said, we owe the world an encounter. And when we say yes, we're saying yes to heaven invading. We're saying yes to Jesus inside of us leaking out. And it's possible. Guys, like I said, it's not about you or your gifting. So you don't have to worry about, but what if I do something wrong? He's going to celebrate your risk, not your success. I'll tell you that. But the second that we step out, he's like, yes, thank you. I find that I've been wanting to come out. Like, hello. I want to love on some people. So I just... I challenge you, take that step and know that God is so pleased to live in you. That he broke the system, everything like that, and he said, I don't want to just be with you in heaven. I want to be with you now. I want heaven to be inside of you now. And let that be what drives you, that heaven is in me now. That his presence is in me now. And because of that, I owe the world an encounter. Now that is a scandalous love. That is his grace, that is his goodness, and that is our Jesus. That is our Savior. That is our Savior. (laughs) That is the goodness of our God. And so I just bless all of you guys. I release his goodness on you. I release a revelation that he is in you, and he is pleased to be in you, and that he wants to reconcile his world back to him, that there are lost souls out there, and it is our job to show them what Jesus looks like. It is our job to show them what he feels like. 
that we really do get to be his hands and feet, that we really do get to release heaven everywhere that you go. Heaven is inside of you and he loves to be in you. So I bless you. I say go in power. I say go in confidence, go in boldness because you have the answer. You have the solution to cancer. You have the thing that the doctors have been looking for, that scientists are looking for. You have it. It's Christ in you. It's the hope of glory. And you guys are gonna change this world. You are absolutely gonna change this world. In Jesus' name. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. Let's raise our hands and praise the Lord. Praise God that Jesus is in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just give him sacrifices of praise right now. Sacrifices of praise. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now just reach over and Touch the shoulder of the person next to you. As we seal this word today, we're going to seal this word today right now in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for the revelation that has come upon us today. A greater revelation of who Jesus is, a greater revelation of what he is to me, a greater revelation of his living in me, a greater revelation that I am his hands, his feet, his arms, his eyes, his tongue, his ability to reach out and touch the lives of those that are right about us, right around us, in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, right now, seal this word today. Seal this word in our hearts. And, Lord, open up my heart, open up my understanding in a greater way, and help me, Lord, to be the Jesus to the world that you have called me to be. Now let's glorify him again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God.